Ready? Hi guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Cross Counter Asia in our interview series. I have with me uh, the beautiful Kara Leung, the Thank face you. behind the, finally get to meet the person behind the camera, taking all those beautiful pictures that we have at uh, our tournaments and at EVO. Um, so let's run through a few questions to get to know our uh, beautiful photographer better. First of all, I need to know, when I first heard your name, Caraface, I didn't know what, because we have that term Cara throw, right? Like Ken, mm -hmm. he has that moving throw. I thought it was a spin-off off that, like a Cara throw, Cara face. Is that what it is? No, it's actually a, a college nickname, Cara mm -hmm. face. Uh, one of my friends randomly came up with it. And that name stuck. The particular part is in Spanish. Uh, Cara also can be pronounced Cara. And with a C, if it's changed to a C, it actually means face. So it means like face, face, two face, face, face. double face. So it's kind of it's kind of funny, not intended. Are you a two-faced yeah. person? Like, do you flip that coin around like the Batman villain? Maybe. Okay. Hopefully no, I... no, I'm not. No. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not two-faced. I'm, you know, open and honest. Fishy face. Ooh. Kale fishy face. Um, so, I didn't know by looking at you, uh, when I, when I first saw you, I thought you were, like, a mixed, like, Caucasian plus another, like, a uh -huh. Eurasian. Mm -hmm. Um, but could you enlighten us and your fans about your, your background, your ethnicity? Yeah, um, at least according to my parents, at least according to them, um, I'm 100% Chinese. I've had Chinese people tell me that I should question my parents again <laughs> about this, but, uh, Grandparents from both sides are from the Toisan area in China, and that's in the Guangzhou province. Guangzhou. So you speak Cantonese. I speak Cantonese. That's actually my first language. Oh, okay. I didn't speak English until I probably was around three or four. That's when I don't I think anyone started. spoke English until they were three and four, and they went to preschool. No, but like it, raising up and everything was always Chinese and okay. stuff like that. Yeah. Funny story is also with some Spanish because. Yeah. My dad actually was born in Mexico, mm -hmm. and the story behind that is uh, father's side, great grandfather. Uh, somehow, somehow, became a rancher in Mexico. What animals was he ranching? I I have no idea. This is just from past past. So this down. wasn't like the Facebook Farmville. This was the actual ranch. Yeah, this is the actual. Actual, like he was there in Mexico. He was a rancher, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and he decided to tell my grandfather come here, and then my dad was born there. So my dad speaks better Spanish than he does Chinese and English. Well, wow! Because he that's the first language, and the funny part is, uh, so there was some Spanish mixed in when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. I I didn't know what the English word for straw was. And so probably I, when I reached like grade school, I always used to just call it a popote because that's what we could always call it. And that's the Spanish word for it. It's a long-winded version of straw. I'm glad that I know English. Mm -hmm. So that's the story. And my, mo my mom is from mm -hmm. Hong Kong. So, okay. But they met in Mexico. Did they cross the border together? Like, was yeah, it they, a secret they, mission? It wasn't a secret mission. They're both legal citizens. They oh. had the green card before they came over. Because I was going to sit across the border with my uh -huh. night vision goggles and watch reenactment. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Green cards. But you were born here. I was born here. Okay. Naturalized citizen. No. Uh, not naturalized. Born no, citizen. You're, yeah, you're just... Yeah. Okay. Now I want to know the background behind your two things. Your photography, one, and two, your involvement in uh, gaming. Like why, yeah, how did you get into both but those why things? Why gaming? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's do the first one. Why photography? Why photography? Yeah. Photography, unlike most people who are like, oh, I've been, a, I've been interested in photography so mm -hmm. young. I did it in high school. I had no interest in photography until I was around 20. You're like a late bloomer, I guess, for photogra photographers? 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 Uh, yeah. Um, I had no interest in it until I was like mid nineteen, probably more more toward twenty. That's when I got interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to, well, I went to school in UC Santa Barbara, and UC Santa Barbara is uh, in Santa Barbara, which is also home to the Brooks Institute of Photography. Okay. 
Brooks Institute of Photography is one of the most famous uh, photo institutes okay. in the world. So, yeah, naturally you have a lot of students. Yeah. And what's the most one of the most popular reasons people get into photography? Fashion, fashion photography. Okay. Because people like shooting people. Right. Either fat. The most popular is like fashion, portraits, weddings. I personally like upskirts of Japanese schoolgirls. They don't teach that. They don't teach that. No, I'll that, teach that, you that. that. That's more Japanese. You just put your iPhone on your shoe, and then like you sort of use the Bluetooth and go. And oh, you stick I your shoe. Or you drop your uh, iPhone or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Okay, so but, you start off as a model or as a photographer? Uh, well, so what happened was those those students always need like models and stuff, and right. some of them were my friends. Mm -hmm. And what do you do for friends? You know, you help them out. Obviously. And I helped them out by you know modeling for them. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started learning, you know, the tricks. It was like you'd be there, and they'd be setting up lights. And me being a curious person, would be like, okay. oh hey, what does this do? Or what are you doing? And what right. are what are you? Why are you sending your camera? Or what does your camera do and stuff? Mm -hmm. And then you learn from there. Okay, this is why they're setting light. What a key light, hair light, yeah. rim, fill. What that all that terminology means? Why they use reflectors? And that's really where I picked up a lot of stuff. So and just reflectors? Huh? Never mind. Oh no, not they're not urine. Oh, okay. But. That's where I picked up a lot of it, mm -hmm. and I'm glad because Brooks students pay like 20 grand per quarter or something like that. What? what? It's really ridiculous because they have like tuition. A quarter or a semester? A quarter because it's a year round school. And because they, you have to buy equipment, film right. equipment and everything. So that's like 20000 a quarter because you have to buy all this equipment and also pay your tuition and stuff like that. So, yeah. And you know, photography equipment is very expensive. What are you? What is your setup? Like uh, people want to know your lens and your body um, kit. What do you? Right, what do you so shoot with? Before I upgraded my body, mm. I was shooting with. Uh, Wait, Fuji. what do you mean by upgraded your body? Uh, my my current body is a Nikon I, I'm just ten D seven thousand. Um, but before that, I was shooting with uh, Fuji. Fuji. Yeah, Fuji Film S two Pro. Hmm. A camera that came out in 2002, so I had it until earlier this year, so I was shooting with something that was like almost a decade old, so it's not really a camera that, yeah. does, all the, that, that does a lot of the work, but it, it's kind of like when you're, you upgrade your equipment, it's mm -hmm. not about getting the ability to do something new, yeah. but getting the ability to make your life easier. Right. And so, All right, so, what I have mm -hmm. for my equipment is a Tamron 70, 17 mm -hmm. to 50 with vibration control. Or vibration Tampon equipment. with vibration control? That sounds so good. Tamron. Oh, Tamron. Tamron, Tamron, Tamron 17 to 50, uh -huh. uh, F2.8 with uh, vibration compensation or vibration control. Sounds and then so good. From time to time, I'll use like a Sigma 70 to 200. So people, if you want to replicate... Kara's beautiful photography, I guess you could spend like 10 G's and, and buy the same equipment? Well, like my main setup, so yeah. the D7000 and Tami, mm -hmm. that's about 1.2K, or no, 1.8K, so yeah. Okay, now, alright, how did you get into the gaming scene? Gaming scene? Yeah. So gaming scene, I got into it. Cause this is your lair right here, like you. Yeah, game. this is where I do all my photo stuff. Okay. This is you know where the magic happens for you know edits and stuff. And like you that. play low. I play low. I used to play Counter Strike for Counter Strike. Nine years. I don't touch it anymore. Uh, I play. I like playing Super Turbo from time to time. That's so hot. But I killed you last uh, night. And. I am horrible at arcade edition, but the reason how I got into gaming, yeah. um, well, when I, think I a lot was of people know that. 14, mm -hmm. that's when I first got into my first competitive game, and that was Counter-Strike, so I played that for nine years. I uh, wasn't ever really good at it, it was decent, somehow got my team to qualify rep to represent the U.S. Mm -hmm. at um, ESWC 2008. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, did what I wanted to do. Got an international tournament. I'm done with this game. This game is dying. Finish him. 
and Counter Strike was dying. So I'm like, right. Now where what, can I move on to next? Yeah. How did you make that transition from Counter Strike, like FPS, uh -huh. into the fighting games? So I was thinking, how can I contribute more to you know gaming in mm -hmm. general? Probably not as a competitor because I'm not that top skilled at all. I'll be the first to admit it. What can I bring? And think about it, I'm like, there's a lot of photographers. What scene do I find very interesting? Mm -hmm. What do I enjoy watching? And it was Street Fighter. But back then, there wasn't really much streams. You just saw the YouTube stuff, but Street Fighter 4 was very interesting. So, yeah. uh, the first scene that I shot was a uh, Dungeon Qualify, Dungeon um, Rambat Finals for Season 1, I believe. I think so we should, really, really yeah, early. I guess explain, before you, uh -huh. I would say, people were only taking shots from the back mm -hmm. and concentrating on the footage. So all you would see is the back of people's heads and their dandruff, regardless of how much head and shoulders they use, the lice, the balding spots, um, and the screen, right? Because that's where the, the meat of the action was. But you have sort of gone on the other side of the table, the other side of the monitor, and you're shooting people head on and getting portraits of the players. Yeah, because um, as a photographer, like yeah. I did do some studying at the university that I went to, which mm -hmm. was UCSB, and I did documentary projects. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite photographers, Larry Fink. So I really like to study Larry Fink. Yeah. Another person I really like is Philip Lor La Philip Lorca de Corsia, um, and they're both either set up of that looks like documentary or are documentary photographers mm -hmm. and that really has influenced my style and when I try to shoot a Street Fighter event yeah. I don't try to shoot it in a detached way like a sports photographer would mm -hmm, mm -hmm. per se or a news person would shoot per se you know it's kind of detached and that analytical yeah I like to try to get up front. That's why I use the wide angle lens. I like to try to get intimate and to be part of the action in the sense that you don't notice I'm there, but I'm in there trying to capture oh, you. Oh, you're there. Like, you, you don't notice me. I'm trying to capture right. what, how you. Spider Man, how the like Peter is Parker, doing. he's on the walls. Yeah. And you're taking pictures. Basically, that, okay. that's the idea. I'm, like, I feel a responsibility to. Capture the emotion, mm -hmm. the venue, the excitement of the tournament yeah. for people who can't come. That's right. that's like I feel like what I'm responsible mm. for as a photographer. Now, who, and there's mm -hmm. no other better way than to document right. the event, document the players for people who can't be there. And that's the way I approach it. And that's why for me, mm -hmm. I had to turn the camera around. Right into the faces because that's where you can see the emotion that's where you can you see the hype of everything you shot them with a the proton cannon I mean because if you wanted to see the back of their heads you wanted to see the action I love screen, scalp shots I love it if you wanted to see that yeah you can go to YouTube and have direct yes. direct yes, recordings can. of it so there's no real point in no. redundancy on it mm -hmm. so that's who why. is your favorite player to shoot my favorite player to shoot. Yeah, who's like the most photogenic? The person that gives you, that, that works with you. All right. You have that so connection. I don't think it's more about photo, like photogenic okay, in this okay, sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's about who makes the most interesting pictures. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, <clears throat> I'd have to pick the person who got me the photo that put me on the map. Oh, who's that? Mike Ross. So if you know anything about the Mike Ross belief picture. It was during SBO qualifiers yeah. in 2009, and it was with uh, him versus Hans. Shout out to Hans. Uh, fuck Hans. Um, so Hans had Mike Ross down to, you know, almost no life and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they're like this close, and then Hans throws a tire shot, and on the action, Mike Ross ultras. And He's connects done him. that to a lot of people. And, like, if the, everyone went wild. And you could see, like, you know, everyone with their hands up. Kamu the Messiah. Fiend with Kamu Fiend with his afro pick here. Yeah. Going like, ah, and stuff like that. And 
that picture, uh -huh. everyone called it the Mike Ross belief picture. Are you, so you're a believer? I have to be. In this I have to believe in this, in this, in this cult. Because this is the guy that put me on the map here. Right. And he brought I would bread to the table. I would still say he's my favorite because Mike Ross is someone who has a lot of passion in the game. Yes, he does. And it exudes in him even when he does it. And also when he sees a camera, he'll ham it up. This guy will ham up for the camera. <laughs> and, and this is why he's also an actor. Shout out to his movie, 88 the movie. You gotta see that with Mike Ross. I, I call him Mike Floss because there's never anything in his white grill. It's like a perfect Hollywood smile. I'm very envious of that. And so he's an actor. Okay. And that's why you're not an actor. No. That's why I'm working under him as a cross Connor slave. Whoosh! Exactly. Do those interviews. Whoosh! Transcribe subtitles, annotations. Whoosh! Yes. But other people mm -hmm. really, really get to photograph. Um, Daigle is always fun to photograph because of the attention he gets from the photos. He's, isn't he like sort of robotic <laughs> on, on the other side of the, the camera? He's robotic, but I like capturing him because there's always a challenge of trying to find that glimpse of because he's not a robot, you know. Mm -hmm. He is human after all, and it's fun to wait for it, and then right when they're I boom, know how you should do it. And then, who else? Uh, Filipino champ also. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very emotional guy. Manny very, Pacquiao. very, very fun to capture him. Um, Japanese side, who else? Tokido. Tokido is very fun. Murder face. Yeah. You know his antics? You know? Demon. Yes. Ultra 2. He's becoming uh, one of my favorite players just because of the face. showmanship. Yeah. Yeah. So Tokido definitely really, really fun to uh, capture as well. Um, yeah, those are the people at the top of my head. All right. Next question. Um, are you pre-ops, post-ops, or black ops, Call of Duty? All right, so I think you might want to explain the things about pre-op, post-op. Oh, post so pre-surgery or post-surgery or yeah. Activision's franchise game. And what he means by the surgery uh -huh. is most notably sex reassignment surgery, which is the surgery for the genitalia. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. And I'm pre-op. I haven't got any surgery done. Really? No surgery. Everything has just been with uh, hormones uh, for almost seven years now. So, yeah. And my stash of hormones is right over here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I have a bunch of my hormones right over here, so my little private stash app. What happens cocktail. if you, like, forget to drink that cocktail, like, one day? Would you revert back to well, see the original the form? It's like super silent, like, psh, and your hair turns back to um, black, and you're Goku again? So, basically what I take is uh, estrogen. I take that in a patch form. Pro progesterone. And I take a spiral lactone, which is actually a, a high blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. But the side effect is that it's also anti-androgen, which means it uh, kills sperm production. Oh, it killed and the millions of friends. Yeah, so Sad if it wasn't there to suppress it, mm. the body could technically uh, start up the testosterone production. But I think after seven years, yeah. I might be uh, chemically sterile. I'm not sure. Chemically sterile. So there'll be no dark phoenix rising. Like, I'm not sure. Control. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. No, I'm not sure. All right. But um, that that's always a possibility. Or maybe, you know, just inert. Um, I think a lot of people want... I know that you have a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. uh, but we might have to break... A lot of hearts at this moment because I'm about to ask you what is your preferred type man woman child beast lowly like what is your what is your preference, Sexual preference. yeah um, for a romantic partner um, am I so to put in, in any the luck? simplest terms simplest terms yes um, it would be bisexual oh I'm in there 
but on the scale of bisexuality, mm -hmm. I'm probably toward 80% female, 20% oh, male. So if you ask me like what I'm, I would actively pers yeah. pursue, it would be females. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I'm against males, and it's not like I've never been attracted to males. It's just that my frequency is a lot less. Now, if a man acted more feminine, would he have a higher chance of being into that 20%? Uh, Alright, so that's not necessarily true. Oh, we have monster drinks back here. Um, that's not necessarily true because men and women have their different attractive qualities. Right. And I'm not attracted to, to a female because they're masculine or because they're, you know, more, more, more likely because they're feminine. And I won't, wouldn't be attracted to him. Like, if I'm attracted to a male, it's not because I would want them to be feminine or be like a girl or be like a chick or something like that. So, mm -hmm. no. Simple answer would be no. God damn. All right. So, I want to ask them. Uh -huh. So, this was your, this was Kao's first Evo, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. When you saw her, did you get hard or wet? Are you attracted to her? Because I was smitten. Like when I, I've always been a fan of hers, uh -huh. and seeing her in real life, like I was just blown away. Did you also have that same reaction? I know. Uh, have you have you been a fan of hers, or is this your first time seeing her? Uh, Kyle, I've been a fan um, even before she did her review mm -hmm. on public oh. TV. Yeah. Um, I after her review, you know. I feel like she's a very inspirational person. By reveal, you mean her coming out, right? Yeah, her coming out as okay. uh, her coming out as a being mm -hmm. a transsexual, mm -hmm. and coming out on her own terms. Yes. I uh, didn't necessarily have that chance uh, in the fighting game community. No. And. Damn you, Google, for having is, information. Is like I don't hide my hide it because like mm -hmm. if you Google it, you'll find it easily. At the same time, I don't come out publicly. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be like, hey, I'm care I'm also transsexual. But right. It doesn't flow like that. Right. That's not... But at, the same, but at the same time, you know, I didn't really have to think. Someone found out, got onto Capcom. From Capcom, it got onto SRK. The community found out. So I really didn't have my own terms. If you could go it. back in time and before, like, uh -huh. it got revealed, how would you have done it on your own terms? Would you have done it like Kale on, on some TV show? Would you have revealed on your blog, like... How well, would you, have done you know it? what? I probably wouldn't have done it. I don't know, but it's out in the open now. Yeah, it's just how it is. Cause like, I don't know. I don't see how me being a transsexual has mm -hmm. anything to do with me and the community documenting it. You know, I don't think I, it has much, uh -huh. you know, relevance. But you know, people want to bring it up. It becomes a focal point. And that's how it is. I was in the uh, front stage when okay. Ko was raping Killer Kai. Uh huh. On on the in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not in the picture. Um, <laughs> but I noticed there was a lot of people in the crowd in the main stage uh -huh. uh, that were sort of heckling her. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't know, she has a fucking dick, like really like vulgar, nasty things. Like, have you ever dealt with that type of hate, and how do you deal with it? Because I know in our scene, like uh -huh. unfortunately, there's a lot of like. You know, I wouldn't. Yeah. I would. I would call it ignorant. Um, like, how do you deal with that ignorance and that that hate and that bigotry and that, like that sex? I mean, sexism? you just kind of ignore it. You go on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're living your own life. You know, you. For me, this is something that I dreamed of since I was really young. I'm not gonna let someone just take it away from me. So I'm just gonna live my life as I see fit. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, you still see all these all these comments like still now like I I can go to SRK I can go there, and you know people are pretty much sometimes assholes yeah. on SRK. That's to be honest, that's part of the reason why I don't go on SRK much. I'd rather go on Capcom on the IRC on Fnet mm -hmm. and chat with those people because they're more tolerant there. Would you say? Or like I've made some friends there mm -hmm. and stuff, so it's a lot easier. And you know the chat's real time, but yeah, I've experienced some hate. Like, 
you know, I was given the nickname Glove Girl at uh, SPO Paul Glo Bars. Glove Girl? Yeah, Glove Girl. And the reason why that was hmm. is because at SPO Paul Fires, they had some downtime. Yeah. And so Gutex got me and some other girl to sit in front of the camera. You know, Gutex was like, you guys sit in front of the camera. We have downtime. He's genius. And, you know, the stream people will like you guys. Right. And the whole time I had fingerless gloves with skulls on it when you I mean, was shooting. You mean like, uh, what is his face? That guy from Emperor Arcadia. Triforce. Like a glove? No, no, no. Like fingerless gloves. Oh, fingerless gloves. Because, you know... You want fingerless gloves as a photographer because you, if you want to keep your hands warm, you want to keep it warm, but mm -hmm. you want to be able to turn your knobs and all the other stuff when you're shooting. And it's kind of hard if you have full, full padding. Are you? <laughs> Sorry, anyways. You're, you're saying turning your knobs and doing that. Because you, when you're doing your photography, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to oh, yeah, I think I've, I've seen you with it. Like that's that. kind of cool. Um, but that's how I got the nickname Glove Girl. And then when people found out, some people kept on saying, oh, it's Glove Boy or Glove Guy. Uh -huh. And stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it sucks, but ignore it and move on. But could that's you my shoot with a power glove Ooh. on your hand? I'm not Triforce. You're not Triforce. You could be Quad Force. No thanks. Or dual Bi Force. Bi Force. All right. Um. Let's see here. So. So I was reading the. Uh, Oh, the book is right behind us. This is Kale Police's reborn book, sort of her biography and how she dealt with coming out and before that. Buy it in Amazon.co.jp. Yes. Um, but it's quite expensive now because the yen is so strong. But it's well worth the money. Um, she was sort of attributing her, I guess, desire to become a female when she was watching Sailor Moon. And she saw that they had the long legs, the little mini skirt. The little bow tie and those big sparkly eyes. Was there anything in your childhood that sort of inspired you to want to make the transition? Uh, for me, it wasn't really an inspiration. For me, it was kind of like um, something I knew. It was kind of something, I mean, if you wanted to use philosophy terms, mm -hmm. it was something that was like a priori. It was always, always already mm -hmm. there, right? even before I knew it. Um, so for me, I used to be a very hyperactive kid. Like Extremely ADD? hyperactive. Like ADD. Who doesn't much. have ADD though? Everyone has ADD. I, but I, like pretty much like ADHD I had. I never got tested for it because I went to a private school. Yeah. And there was no like, you, you had to get testing like in, in a public school. Mm -hmm. And they put you on Ritalin. So what happened was like, as a child, all I would do would be like, oh, I don't care who you are, what gender you are, I'm going to play, 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 play. So like, when I went to English school, it was usually with the boys, you know, they were the more active ones. Yeah. And when I went to Chinese school on the weekends, because um, I started really at like around five years, so I started going to Chinese school. And uh, a lot of the people would be older than me. And a lot of them would be like junior high, high school uh, guys. Yeah. Rather they rather play your magic cards or, you know, chill around talk mm -hmm. or smoke or something like that. And the girls would be playing Chinese jump rope and like, All right, let's play Chinese jump rope. Yay. So for me, gender wasn't relevant at that point right. of life. It wasn't until like around third grade and that's when they start separating you, you know, boys signed up, girls signed up in one place and stuff. Because in kindergarten you don't do that kind of things, you know, it's kind of almost intermingled and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's when I started noticing the separate the separation of gender because it becomes socialized into right. you. Um, and I noticed something was up and it there's something wrong. I couldn't pinpoint it. Cause it wasn't until like when I was ten. Hmm. Ten years old was um, the fateful night that I remember was during our sex edu education night, and that's when they you know they're telling they put on this cheesy video right and say. This is what your body goes through when, right now because of blah, 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 puberty, right? puberty and development and stuff. And that was the biggest nightmare for me ever. Because you know they separate the women into one room and the boys in one room. It scared the living shit out of it me. It was a dream come true for me. I was like, my penis is going to get bigger and I'm going to get hair? That's... I wanted this. 
but for that, you it was like a harrowing experience. Oh my god, that was that was extremely that was one of the most extremely scariest things for me. Like mm -hmm. I did not want this to happen. I like I remember like literally crying to sleep at times and stuff like oh, that, okay. praying to God if you could just change me and stuff like that. Is it that you wanted to get the girls signed? Like you wanted to have your, your No, I wanted to you want be. And no, you wanted I wanted dress. to be a girl. That's like what I what I wanted to be mm -hmm. like and that's what I realized you know what 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 it was all those feelings and stuff like that like there's something wrong and then like I mean at the, at the age of 12 that's when I decided that I was gonna transition nothing was gonna stop me at 12 I decided I'm gonna go through with this transformers and I, the way I was going to do it was I was going to get into college. Mm -hmm. And once in college, I was going to use, you know, my resources to do it. Because that's when I would be able to, you know, be away from home and stuff. And later on, I learned that there was stuff like health insurance provided by school. And I took advantage of that. Yeah. And that's where I really, really began my uh, transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Let's see here. Now, a little Street, uh, street Fighter related question. In Tekken vs. Street Fighter, the new yeah. game coming out, Tekken Cross Street Fighter, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. will you be using Poison, the character? I believe she's trans, if I'm not mistaken. Rumor has it. Yeah, according to Capcom. Yeah. She is, um... Does, I mean, does it appeal to you as a character? I mean, it's definitely interesting when to try her out. Yeah. Gonna try out the game if it comes out on PC because I don't want a console. This is all, this is this is my gaming. This is your life right here in the back. Basically, yeah. PC. That's it. So yeah, I definitely will give her a try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Now I had a sort of twisted dark fantasy of you and Ko, and I want to know if the two of you hooked up. Who would be on top and who would be on bottom? It would be, if I was a director, I would call it two girls and a cup and a joystick. You know, Pound Capcom or Pound Trap Com has called this the fabled trap tape. <laughs> Does it exist? No. I was going to torrent it right now. Um, looking at it in aesthetics wise, okay? okay? You're gonna be she's with it. So she's the, the one that's taller. She is very tall. I'm the one that's a shorter. Mm -hmm. And probably would be better if she was the top, I guess. Be, you know, the more, probably the more the dominant one being that she was the taller one. It looked more natural aesthetically. So that's the answer I would probably go with. So you would be receiving the KNA's sauce. Who who said anything about oh, that? Oh, okay, sorry. I don't know. I don't know. So so if we had to make a sort of fusion, it would be Ko face, not Kara police, because Ko would be on top. Ko face, right? I don't know. I mean, well, pick why, one. Don't, pick why, one. why don't you let the viewers decide? All right, K all right voters, we need Ko face or Kara police. Yeah, Ko face, Kara police. If I it's the latter, I want to be arrested and cuffs. And you can... no? Never mind. Um, I guess we're sort of running out of time, but if you could have a message for your fans out there, and also how they can reach you on like any social media, like a Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to thank everyone really for their support, you know. I never thought uh, I'd get so much support and recognition for all of this mm -hmm. um and you know internationally too you know like uh you know people from japan people from europe you know i've got messages from people like thanking me and stuff and i'm always really 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 super humbled when i hear that and it really that's what really drives me to do continue you, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because of people's gratitude and how it actually, you know, people actually appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, like, um, if you ever want to contact me, 
We'll have uh, the links right here. There's uh, my name, Caroline, mm. on Twitter. So twitter.com slash Caroline. Uh, Facebook, Facebook is be facebook.com slash Caraface. And uh, any questions, always can ask me on Formspring. And Formspring, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, but we'll put the link right here. All right, there you go. Great. Right. So I want to give you. I guess we never do this really, but do you have any message for the haters out there, or do you want to just sort of take the high road and sort of ignore the hate and do what you do? Like, have you? You know, you know what someone said. You know, mm. you're never. You're not someone. If you haven't made it. You didn't haven't gotten your recognition until you got your haters so so I guess you guys have val you. haters you guys have validated Kara face yeah and she's here to stay yeah cuz like if someone puts enough effort into hating yeah. you you know you, might, you made a significant enough impact for them to hate you I was so happy that no one hated me but I guess that means I'm nobody don't worry I'm sure you'll get your share can you hate me then no I'm not a hater all right, um, I guess that's all we have. Later, guys. Bye. Fishy face. Kale fishy face. All right, Mike, let's play a game. Okay, good text. The game is, guess what combo I'm doing on this Mad Cat's TV stick. I like this challenge. But you can't look. Okay. You, you have to listen. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yes. Again? Do that one more time. Again? One more time. That would be crouching short, standing jab, standing jab, Rekka, Rekka, Rekka by Fei Long. Close. The last one is crouching jab, but that's close enough. Okay. I'll, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Thank you. you, thank you. All right, all right. Okay. Are you ready for another one? I'm ready for another one. Okay. One more Again? time. One Again? more time. That would be Crouching Fierce Reflector FADC Dash Forward Soul Throw from Rose. You win. I need something more difficult, Gutex. Please challenge my knowledge of Street Fighter. Okay, all right. That was an easy one. That is definitely Flash Metroid Zangief. God, Mike, you're so good at this game. Uh, this is my favorite game. I can <laughs> tell you, you guys. Know? I can tell them something. You too can play this game at home if you purchase yourself a Madcast TE stick. That's right. Go to this URL right here. Use coupon code CrossCounter. Save 10%. Go.